Welcome back to Rough Cut Faith. We... <laughs> Sorry. I can't work under these conditions. <laughs> I just had this picture of like, yeah, I should have sandpaper and a block of wood. <laughs> just be like... <laughs> Sorry. But like the whole time, you're just sitting there. Just... <laughs> That's it. That's I can do this. This is doable. I've got sandpaper right in there. <laughs> That was my last. No, it wasn't. No, yeah, it really wasn't. That's okay. Let's just roll with it. Keep yeah. going. Okay. <laughs> Leave that in. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, guys. Welcome back to Rough Cut Faith. We are jumping back into the conversation before the conversation. Uh, <laughs> last week, we talked about <clears throat> the... Beats that go into um, tackling a long-form discussion about an extended piece of scripture, especially one that has different uh, means of interpretation. Um, it can be very easy to lose the beat on what the major themes are that, that the, the chapter is trying to get across. And, and last week was um, almost like a built-in tutorial on how do you study scripture well and all of that. So this week, we're getting into a bit more of the particular conversations um, that go into how do you start to pull apart and then put back together a particular set of verses. So this week, Hmm. it's going to be Scott who is prepping for the sermon that'll happen on Sunday. And this is where you start to kind of zoom in on some of the particular parts of 24 that folks had an opportunity to see at an aerial view, which was great. You did a phenomenal job at pulling out the the big picture mm-hmm. perspective of that. So, when after something like that, what, st- start us off by taking a look at where, how do you start to choose? Okay, this is where I start to zoom in and sure. start to pull out the important pieces. Sure. So, um, so typically when we approach a teaching, I usually will break down a rough idea on like what we're doing. And so um, I had originally grouped all of 24 and Mike was like, well, 24 and five would be better to to give that overview. So Mm -hmm. so Mike kind of did that. And then I have specific areas that are broken up afterwards. Um, Part of the weirdness of it is usually after we do a massive chunk and when it's done well, and you're like, yeah, I don't really know that I need to add anything to that. You come back to the past, and then basically when it finished yesterday, I was like, well, I, we could just move on to 26 now, <laughs> is, is how I felt. That's, I mean, you know, it's, it's um, because part of the gathering when we get together, it's, it's more than just an informational teaching, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It's if you can help people begin to grasp and wrestle with some of the concepts that, are, that scriptures have, and then uh, what, what do we move forward with? And we talked about it. You, we prepare messages in a lot of ways for a context of the people that are that are present that we are caring for and how does scriptures not only what is the truth of what scriptures speak but how does the truth of what scripture speaks speak to the people that m- mostly where we're at mm-hmm. and um so last night i i, I went back into uh, matthew 24 and just kind of started reading and looking through it, trying to go, Lord, what is it that, um, what is it that y- you want us to hear mm-hmm. this week? Uh, because the reality is, is I, I have a, a portion that I had originally mapped out in the teaching schedule that we could do, but I don't know that it's necessarily where our folks are at. And so part of the conversation today, usually what I do. Uh, when I find myself in that spot is Mike and I sometimes we'll have a lunch and then we'll sit down and we'll have that conversation. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking about. This is, is this, is, is this track? Like, mm-hmm. you know, do we still feel like this is a good direction to go for, for the community that we're shepherding, that we're pastoring? 
And, uh, and so that's happening around the table a little bit today. So here's a question. Sure. How often do you find it where you have your plan, you have your trajectory, all of that kind of stuff, and then something happens, life happens, people are in a different spot, and mm -hmm. you find yourself needing to pivot away from what you had planned in a substantive way? Hmm. I, it happens occasionally. Yeah. I think what happens the most <clears throat> is we have because we preach through books of the Bible. Yeah. So what happens the most is we'll break down passages, mm -hmm. but that's like, we haven't done nine months of study on that book before breaking it down. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, it's a few weeks of study and like reading through and seeing how the, the strains of thought connect and mm -hmm. where things are going and then you, then you go into it. And then I think what happens more often is we get into a passage and go, this is 12 verses, I think it should be split into two. Mm -hmm. We could probably do two sermons mm -hmm. yeah. on this passage alone. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to break that down and then everything else moves down. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a couple of occasions where I think we broke it and then mm -hmm. later on we combined a couple yeah. because it was like, oh, these are the same thoughts. Yeah. It's kind of like 25. Yeah. Um, the end of 24 and the first third, two thirds of 25 are three parables that all talk about the same thing. Yep. Yeah. So we're not gonna, like, I yeah. don't remember how it was broken down, but yeah. if it was, if those three were broken down into different path mm -hmm. sermons, we would probably combine them. Yeah. And that's, that's part of just getting, the more study we do in a book, mm -hmm. um, the more often we start to see consistent themes popping up. Yeah. That happened a lot in Corinthians. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, becomes, it becomes much more of a collaborative like I, I may, I may kind of like build some foundation, but then we're like, eh, we need to put a window here. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to put a wall up here, you know, um, or we need to blow a wall out so that we can really just go all the way through. Yeah. And, uh, and and that that I think is one of the beauties of not being a solo guy coming in and just teaching a, a, by myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But it becomes yeah. much more of the collaborative uh, conversation. Uh, and and there are seasons where those those conversations happen a lot. And then there are seasons where the early conversations, kind of like the ripple effects of those continue to shape and we may not yep. have lunch for a while or we yep. may not have those conversations. But, but when, when we tend to take big chunks that we then want to come back and like as Mike used in his message uh, this last weekend, it was, you know, it's like skipping a rock across multiple chapters yeah. and then then you come back and you let that rock sink down in those spots, those touching points. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and so you try to figure out what are those themes and then how do you not repeat some of those themes too? Mm -hmm. So um, that's, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question. It just becomes more of the, yeah, let's let's lean into this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. let's not. Let's. And, and I think sometimes more to, I think you asked more to the point of, engaging with people like how do you how do you pivot based on what's going on in the lives of the congregation mm -hmm. there's times where we where the emphasis of the passage may address more of like a cultural space that we're all in yeah mm -hmm. uh, and so we might <laughs> choose to emphasize that element yeah. of the passage or say you know let's split this because this part right here is talking about something that we need to really focus on and address rather than just move past it yeah. right so those are those are times where we do that too right yeah i i think um that's probably a really great way of describing it is is what is going on in the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and that doesn't change the truth of what the passage teaches right but it does yeah. sometimes affect the way where we lean into it mm -hmm. yeah and an mm -hmm. aspect of it yeah so um, and I think that's some of the difference and distinction between preaching for just pure knowledge of dissecting a passage mm -hmm. and honoring the intention of the author while also um, speaking into where, where people are at. Yeah. Because um, I, think, I think you can do both yeah. um, and still honor scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so you approached this week and, and you were um, a little unsure about the way that it was broken up. So go ahead and open that up yeah. to, to folks about what, 
where your brain's at as far as all sure. that goes. Well, so um, I, I, I mean, honestly, Mike did such a good job of that skipping the stone across those these two chapters, uh, and and I, I I guess in many ways one of the things that. Um, that I've been toying with the idea of where, where do we land this week and I, I voiced the question and you were like well let's just have the conversation on the mm -hmm. mic if you're if you're open to that and so sure why not you know mm -hmm. um, the question that I walked away with last night uh, that I wanted to sit down and, and bounce around with Mike was <clears throat> Jesus when he begins in Matthew 24 uh, where he starts to to start laying out what he's going to really dig into mm -hmm. in what's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he says there's many, in verse 6, he says, and you'll hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Mm -hmm. These things must take place. Um, but the end won't follow immediately. And I think in our cultural moment right now, um, you know, we, we've talked about how bad news sells. It's, yeah. it's one of the reasons that I don't, just leave the news on in my house because I want my kids to enjoy their childhood. Yep. You know, it's it's like, yeah. oh no, no, yeah. we we, you know, I'll read it. I'll do, uh, you know, I try to be aware, but mm -hmm. I don't just have the constant uh, churn of chaos mm -hmm. and yep. uh, and fear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and so, but that that's that's a decision that that my wife and I have made for our home, mm -hmm. a very intentional decision, um, but. But that's not everyone's choice. Mm -hmm. right. And so a lot of people, and not everyone, but a lot of people have that constant mm -hmm. speaking mm -hmm. of the chaos and how bad things are. Yep. Um, and it's, uh, and in some ways it's, it's e like our brains prioritize that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's not a, it's not a, it's not like, oh, we're, we're, we're macabre. No, it's just like, well, if this is important, you know, mm -hmm. then like we, we yeah. have these hierarchies of things that we put value on and, and like, oh, so good news. Well, that's not necessarily something that drives us yeah. mm -hmm. to go get it, yeah. right? But our, but our brains and the way that our minds work often, it's that could be a threat. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna, I wanna be aware to that. I wanna be like, I don't wanna m miss something that could cause harm. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't think that it's a, I don't think it's a macabre thing for yeah. us that we're just like, ooh, we just want to. Like, I think there's a reason for why we're drawn to those types yeah. of things. And yet, those things nurture something inside of us that I think, in many ways, can undermine our ability to trust God in the midst mm -hmm. of chaos. Well, it's, uh, sorry if I no, that's fine. thought. Um, I'm used to interrupting yeah. you, and I don't want to. It's the way we function, I, I don't right? do that. Just, other people get to watch it happen <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is in front of people. I don't want to <laughs> be as rude yeah. as normal. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think fear, fear is a motivator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I look at a passage like this and think, I wonder if Jesus was, I, I don't like, this is maybe not intrinsic in the passage and we don't necessarily need to go here. But my thought was fear is such a motivator. But when Jesus says, don't panic, mm -hmm. um, it's like, he's saying, don't be motivated by fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's got to be something else that motivates you. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Um, and when he comes back, that's why I, I looked at last week. We only talked about 24. And as I was preparing, I just was like, I got to do 25 too because yeah. it's the same thought. There are these chunks. But in 25 is the culmination. And that's when he says at the end where he says, those on my right, those who were followers, those who were endured to the end, here's what you did. You did all of these good things and you didn't yeah. even realize that when you were doing these great things, uh, when you were helping people, you were doing it to me. Um, and they said, when did we do this? Yeah. Right. And so I look at this as he starts off with this, don't panic. Yeah. All, the, all these bad things are going to happen. Don't panic. And then he ends with all these bad things were happening yeah. and you were doing mm -hmm. good in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't panic. <laughs> Yeah. Like it, you didn't get thrown off course by mm. the fear. Yeah. Um, you, the fear didn't force you into following a different Messiah. The fear didn't force you into hiding in a cave until all the bad things were yeah. gone. Yeah. The fear didn't force you to forget about your neighbor and forget yeah. about the marginalized and forget about the oppressed. Yeah. Um, the fear was not the motivator. Yeah. It was loving Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was the motivator. So if we have to 
get beyond the fear yeah. of, uh, or get beyond fear being the motivator mm -hmm. for our lives. Yeah. Get beyond fear being the motivator for how we engage with other people, yeah. how we engage with the world around us. And I think in, at least for that first section where Jesus is talking about all of these things that are gonna happen, yeah. it, it feels to me like he just keeps saying, don't let fear be the motivator here. Yeah. Yeah, don't I think, let it shape how you engage with the world. Well, I don't have to preach this week now. Good night, everybody. <laughs> but, Wait, uh, we still have the rest of the chapter. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I think part of what you're drawing out, though, is the beauty of looking at the what. Like, there's so much of scripture but specifically Matthew that I really think it would benefit folks to do what you guys have kind of found yourselves doing take the whole thesis statement and then go back and hit the individual because while you're saying you know do, do not fear is not directly yeah. directly yeah. stated in the subtext is there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, one of the many aspects where the rabbit can get very, very lost in trying to work your way through what Jesus is saying and how that is pulled forward into a modern context yeah. is this idea of words like fear and anxiety yeah. being interchangeable. Mm -hmm. Or because you're talking about yeah. fear, you're giving a, a commentary on mental health mm -hmm. or yeah. something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And it becomes something that the, that is not authentic to the actual passage <laughs> and what Jesus is getting at. But if we don't allow for those little, those, those mm -hmm. crop ups of things mm -hmm. and off, yeah. off ramps and stuff like that, then I, I'm inclined to agree that, like, yes, there are individual examples of, of that Jesus uses that would be relevant for them and are obviously, yeah. if mm -hmm. you are aware of the, the climate of the world, are relevant to us today. Yeah. But these are, these are examples that all serve towards a larger thesis statement like yeah. what you pulled out when mm -hmm. you talked about 24 and 25. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's funny as as we think about how we ended up getting to this spot over the years. It really came from getting to a point where we just felt like, listen, if we're going to teach this, we've got to have the the framework all in place. Otherwise, you end up with a passage that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. so what what's so helpful about what what Mike did and what he covered this weekend is. Okay, we've got the framework, and so now now we just go. What are the important important parts yeah. to to lean into? Yeah. yeah, and I think in many ways that's where for me, I, I, you, you get into a passage like this, and it's like, well, do you do you approach or address the the elephants in the room of, oh, what if, what about different theological camps and how they interpret this, you know? But, and, but then that turns into this whole thing of, well, I'm right, they're wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns into a, you know, a debate about it. And, and I think there's a time and a place for those. Yeah. You know, but if that's the focus, mm -hmm. then what is it that we're nurturing in people's hearts as yeah. they come yeah. to Scripture? Yeah, and I think we touched on it last week. You, a sermon or the message that you speak to a crowd is not your opportunity to make everyone agree with you. Yep. It's it's the opportunity to say, here's what scripture says, here's how I believe, here's what I believe it is leading us towards. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and why. And, and why, yeah. and here's what we do <laughs> yeah. in light of it. Uh, but if you wanna have a discussion about it and you disagree with this, that's something for another time mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to get into a 30-minute diatribe on why I'm right and anyone who disagrees with me is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a terrible use of your time. Yeah. You have so little time with people to get yeah. into scripture and teach it. 
don't teach your opinion yeah. or don't don't go at it teaching that you're right and they're wrong. Yeah. Um, better to stay away from that. Yeah. So, <laughs> not to not to put the the cart before the horse. Sure. But I guess I'll I I will ask being a part of that generation that um that was the left behind generation mm -hmm. yeah. and, and all of that mm -hmm. so wars and and rumors of wars yeah and, yeah and everybody knows what's happening right now sure. in yeah. israel yeah mm -hmm. start to unpack sure what what goes through your mind uh as far as like okay i'm gonna do, do do I just ignore this yeah. and in keep with the principle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I don't, yeah. How do I avoid or how do I avoid the incredible bear trap? Sure. That mm -hmm. countless books have been written about, countless yeah. theories have been posited about this war, this moment yeah. of history, whatever. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I'm going to give Mike the passage about Gog and Magog, so <laughs> we don't have to worry about that, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, I, so, so I think, as I think about this passage, right, so I even had some conversations with people yesterday uh, or this, this past weekend after the message about, like, when all of the stuff started breaking loose in the Middle East recently, mm -hmm. family started calling other family mm -hmm. and going, is this Armageddon? Yeah. Is this, 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 and mm -hmm. is this, this, and is this, like, it's almost like there is a whole generation that was conditioned to see chaos mm -hmm. in the Middle East and in and around Israel as, oh, it is the ultimate fulfillment of scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet, I mean, what do you do about the seven day war? Like seven day war, what do you do about this? What do you do about that? Mm -hmm. All of those things could have been yeah. something that people would have hung scripture yeah. on. And so I, I don't think you can ignore it. I don't think that's helpful, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's all, I also don't think it should be the primary focus. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I yeah. think you have to be, and what I was so grateful for in the conversation that we had yesterday was the person that their family reached out to him just simply just went, well, I don't know, maybe, mm -hmm. but maybe not. Here's what I know, like, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so they kind of walked people back through some, the, the, their family members back through this concept. Um, and. And I and it's 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 it goes back to the this whole thing of you know having grown up in the '90s uh, pre Y2K like all the stuff where people are like it's gonna happen it's gonna mm -hmm. happen yeah. you know the those are hell attack helicopters in Revelation the, <laughs> the locusts you know the are, locusts are, are this and, and yeah. people are just hanging stuff on this and this and this and this and then what happens when when that doesn't become reality mm -hmm. is everybody goes oh see the Bible's not trustworthy yeah yep. Oh, the Bible is like, oh, they're just a bunch of nut jobs. Yeah. Right. Like, and it, it, it's, it's just a very, it's destructive to people's faith if you make mm -hmm. speculative prophecy, like, presented as fact. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so I think it is, it is helpful to address it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to say, could this be, could that be? Maybe, and, and often when I've taught over the years in some of these things, I may actually present a couple of different ideas. Mm -hmm. Here's some thoughts about how some people would interpret this passage. Here's some thoughts about how people would, other people would interpret this passage. And, and then to go, here's, here's where we're at. Yeah, right. Right, and so, and this is why. And that's the beauty of, probably that's why we build the foundations mm -hmm. in the bigger scope of mm -hmm. things. Because then it allows us to go, you got to keep the big picture in mind. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to lean to one camp or the other camp. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that, that passage probably didn't have anything to do with either camp. Right. Yeah. yeah and I, I remember, this is as children of the 90s, you know, <laughs> I was, I think I was four, 13 or 14 when we invaded Iraq. Mm -hmm. yep. So the Persian Gulf War, and yeah. I remember stacks of books yep. on how this was the end this yeah. yep. like we've invaded like america's involved where and it was and i'm going this is iraq like yeah. this isn't really israel but yeah but in we were the, convinced in the books right? it's like well this is babylon is resurfacing and yeah. uh, they're going to come against israel so this is preemptive to protect israel and yeah. and it's it's like 
how far back do you want to go? You know, yeah. 88 reasons why Christ is coming back in 1988. Yeah. There's yeah. Uh, back in the 40s, I, I think it was... A survival Thir Guide for the Soul in yeah, the 70s. Yeah, there was the 30s and 40s. <laughs> there was these this... books and leave them everywhere so right. that when the rapture happens, people are safe. Yeah, yeah. and you know? there's there's so many of these these books that have been written. Yeah. Um, even the, the Restorationist movement, and I can't remember the era, I think it was back in the 30s or 40s, when there was a Baptist <laughs> minister in New England who gathered a huge following yeah. saying that he figured out when Christ was coming back. And then when it didn't happen, he thankfully said, I was wrong. I'm no longer going to be leading this. But that, what happened after that was like several denominations that were known as the Restorationist Movement was restoring the true church. Yeah. And so Mary Baker Eddy was part of that restoration. She was part of this group that thought Jesus was coming back. And um, I think the United Church of Christ, I, I may be getting it wrong, but there, there are several different groups that were restorationist churches mm -hmm. um, in our denominations now that grew up yeah. out of this wrong interpretation. Yeah. Yep. And they've basically become cults now because this one person is the one person that they listen to. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, like you could just go throughout history. And I, I believe that coming back to this passage, I think that's the false prophet. Like yeah. when, when yeah. Jesus was talking about false <laughs> prophecies, false messiahs, I think we can lump these types of people into that as the people who are saying, look, here's when Jesus is coming back or here's yeah. when the rain's gonna start. They may not be a false messiah, but they're certainly a false prophet who are yeah. looking ahead and saying, I have the answer. I know yep. when this is going to happen. Yep. Uh, and, and people latch on and to people latch on to because it. they're yeah. like oh uh, we don't like the uncertainty of it yeah yeah, yeah. so so <clears throat> going back to your your question joe i think that it is important for us to address the whole left behind um concept because it it may not be false prophecy but it the people who follow it to its uh, logical conclusion is yeah. mm -hmm. because we put the timelines up because yeah. we write the books because yeah. we say this is when it's happening because yeah. everything is kind of looking at these signs are leading up to it but every single time we've seen a book written about the signs that are leading up to Christ's return it's been wrong yeah, yeah. and I don't think we should give those people a platform anymore Right. Yeah. Like, if you've been wrong about when Jesus comes back, yeah. then you probably shouldn't be listened to about anything else. It, it probably would be worth noting that even just that whole series was a work of fiction. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it brought, like, yeah. it, that was it, never designed to, at, at least with something like, like the Da Vinci Code. Dan Brown mm. went out, stuck his foot in his mouth, and yeah. said, I believe everything in this is true. He literally gets false information on like page two when he talks yeah. about how many uh, glass panes there are on the Louvre. Yeah. Literally <laughs> from Jump Street, it is yeah. incorrect. Yeah. yeah. But with with the Left Behind series, it was never designed to be that mm -hmm. or presented as if it was that. Mm -hmm. It just plays on the the being able to to marry an adventurous version of an adventurous reading of Revelation mm -hmm. with the hero's journey, which is why you get the big antagonist of the Antichrist and yeah. Jesus coming in as the returning hero to save the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that, like, we can look at 24 and call that a rapture. Um, and in this, when Jesus says, I come back and I call mm -hmm. my own to yeah. myself. Like, yeah, yeah, that we could say that's rapture. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he doesn't disappear again for seven years. He doesn't disappear again for a thousand years. Or yeah. we don't get taken somewhere else. It's just here they are. Yeah. <laughs> We're here, and he separates yeah. those he called from those like those who followed him from yeah, those who didn't. Different. Just like goats and sheep are separated yeah. by a shepherd. Yeah. Um, we see it all playing out all in one sure. continuous stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't look at, you may be able to make a case for a pre-trib or pre-millennial rapture or whatever in other books, but you can't do it here right. for one thing. Um, and the other place you go is like six verses in Revelation. Yeah. And ta you pull those out and say, well, this, you build a whole eschatological framework 
um, or belief system on the end times based yeah. on these six verses. And then you have to translate or interpret everything else through the filter of those six verses yeah. or these other places. Yeah, that's a dangerous way to handle scripture. Yeah, you can't, yeah. You can't yeah. handle scripture that way. It's very yeah. damaging. Yeah. And I think that that's where, I mean, I can say it here. <laughs> Well, I remember you're yeah, saying it everywhere, I'm saying Michael. it everywhere, but I, I just... quote this down. I just think that the, the, the concept, the, the left behind version of a rapture mm -hmm. is one of the flimsiest doctrines in any yep. theological yeah. structure. Yep. Yep. Um, it is, it, you have to, the, the number of scriptural gymnastics that you have to do to make, to force that in and yeah. make it be there is... Quite astounding. But the folded clothes, Mike. <laughs> I mean, you know, just like, because oh, God is God of order, so the clothes are ni nicely folded. They are right? folded nicely. Yeah, yeah. But he said not to pack, so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's really what I'm it so is. I'm so confused. Don't pack, just take the clothes off and run, right? Is yeah, that it? But I fold guess. them first. Fold Wait, the clothes oh, yeah. and then run? I don't know. <laughs> So confused. I mean, if we're going to do it, we got to be consistent, gotta, right? Yeah. Oh, so, so yeah. Jesus says there's naked people hiding in caves. Yeah, Is that what's going on know. in this passage? I don't, I don't know. Oh man. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I think that's where when you come to a passage like this, you, you can't ignore it because, mm -hmm. you know, Mike, you've said it, we've said it. The bad theology hurts people. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have to, in many ways, at least acknowledge that there are some different opinions. Mm -hmm. on this passage and some different ways that this passage has been handled. And I think with the overview of what you've done, mm -hmm. it allows us to at least go, listen, th this is where this comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. This is, this is where a perspective like this, um, is pulled out of, but, but when you consider everything else, how do we live in light of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it really allows us to lean back into like, and this is the thing you said, could you make an argument for a rapture here? Yeah. Probably, right? Yeah. But but does that affect the way that we should be living in the midst of the chaos as followers of Christ? Yeah, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, or I mean, absolutely. Like, it doesn't. It's not like all of a sudden. Well, if the rapture's there, then we don't have to live with hope, and we don't have to not panic, and we don't have to yeah. be like it. It doesn't. Yeah. It, it doesn't change. Well, it's like the the. I'm just pulling all my money out of my bank account. Yeah. Because. The rapture is going to happen any day now. Yeah. So I put a bunker in. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not gonna. Like, we got a new building. We're not gonna take care of it because there's chaos in the Middle East. So you know, we're not <laughs> yeah. gonna be here that long. Right. So let's right. just. And you know, that type of thinking <laughs> happens. That, that's that what does. I think right. is so yeah. is so that's, important about understanding how to handle scripture yeah. with in light of um, yeah. an end times type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, sure. You have because it does affect how you live your life, and yes. I think, and it's really important that you went back to that because um, I think that's ultimately what we have to do when we teach yeah is it's not good enough to just give a bunch of information mm -hmm. how does this affect your life what yeah. do you do now in light of this yeah yeah and I, and I don't I don't like I, I I think I've got brothers and sisters in Christ that would hold to a different position than mm -hmm. I do about mm -hmm. this passage yeah I'm still gonna lean back into how does this change the way how's that yeah how do you live in light of that yeah like, I mean, honestly, does mm -hmm. it, because if, if, if it's a, if it's don't panic and I, and I would have to do like some of the word study in and around that, what yeah. is, what is, yeah. what is Matthew talking about? What is Jesus talking about? What do those words mm -hmm. mean? But, but the reality is, is there, there's a whole community of people mm -hmm. that are, they wouldn't say that they are panicking, but they have stored food to last for years. Mm -hmm. Because if it, you know, like there is there is a, a preparation for the chaos yeah. that they're like well we're not panicking but we're totally living differently mm -hmm. we're not stepping into the needs of what's going on mm -hmm. we're taking care of our immediate family yep. we've bought the mountain on the hill with the bunker and mm -hmm. the <clears throat> in the fortress on top so we can see people coming around we've got you know we've got plenty of ammunition stored up yeah. so that, you know, if somebody comes to assault us, we're sick. Like, I mean, like, I don't understand. You may not call that panicking, mm -hmm. right? You may say, well, no, we're not, we're just trying to be wise. We're preparing. Because we, so we, we don't see the signs it. of the times and yeah. we know what's coming. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. But what does Jesus tell you to do? Mm -hmm. And I think we have to come back to that yes. as followers of Christ. What yes. is, what does Jesus tell us to do? Yeah. What is he telling us to look for? 
mm-hmm. well, it's him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's understanding who he is and his truth so well yeah. that you recognize the false when it shows up. Yeah. So, yeah. as as I hear you guys talking, um, I'm taken to, you know, you when for those of you that are watching this, you are watching three pastors break this down, but there's truth in this for anybody mm-hmm. and everybody, mm-hmm. and how you handle theological difference, mm-hmm. and so. Um, this is where uh, one, of, one of the things that I, I truly love about uh, creating content with folks that are longer in the tooth than I am is I'm able to uh, key in on uh, the voice of a particular subsect of the audience in, in a way that might not have um, either the best track record with navigating theological difference mm-hmm. or really the tools to know how do I handle this well because I listen to both of you guys and I'm you know I, I understand it's there's there's a little bit of ribbing mm-hmm. on a particular way of, of thinking sure. but there are absolutely people that read this and say oh okay don't panic well I'm not panicking yeah. but I but I also don't care about the state of the world, the state of people, the state of my community, the state of anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be here, so I don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Exactly. And so when you're talking about this kind of thought process, walk folks through charting out how, because whether, whether you are up here on Sunday, yeah. And you are walking folks through, okay, so now we've covered the large themes. These are the large themes. But now you're you're unplugging the scripture from the large theme and presenting it in a way where most people have heard it. Yeah. So now you open yourself up to eliciting yeah. that emotional response sure. out of folks that might not and i'm not i'm not trying to poke at anybody because this is a sure. human thing sure. this is innately human yeah so navigating something that elicits that emotional response or is found their their only mode of interpreting it is founded in something that says I don't need to care because of X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Where does somebody even begin to start when saying, okay, this is how I'm going to handle addressing something without just making it, without just falling into the trap of saying, hey, anybody who holds to a pre this, post this, yeah this kind of mindset yeah Mm -hmm. you've you've got it wrong Mm -hmm. yeah i think i think you have to really be aware that you're not attacking a straw man when Mm -hmm. you when you come to scripture to teach something like that can you define that sure yeah sure so you have to make sure that you're not creating a caricature of someone that Mm -hmm. is not actually accurate yeah. So one of the things that's shaped even the and way then, that, and then attacking and then that attacking caricature. that that yeah. caricature, right? Yeah. Because like one of the things that shaped me, um, where I began to realize this a few years ago, uh, when we started teaching on communion, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we started looking at what are the terms that Scripture really uses, and what are the traditions of the church, and the mm-hmm. terms that the church has mm-hmm. used throughout history. Um, to describe that practice, and I know that growing up there were certain um, traditions. Um, denominations, branches of Christianity that, like in some in some circles, like oh, they're they're that's where the Antichrist is coming from, mm, yeah. yeah, right. And yeah. so so we can't use what they would say, and and so we have a caricature of what they taught about communion. Mm-hmm. Now I have some theological differences, some pretty strong theological differences with some of these traditions. Yet what I what I learned when I 
when I was going through the study was I need to not have issues with the caricatures of what I was told, even yeah. in Bible college, mm -hmm. that they have. I need to understand their sources. Mm -hmm. I need to, I don't want to say something about someone that they wouldn't acknowledge about themselves. Now then you can start going back and, and working through that and mm -hmm. looking mm -hmm. at those types of things. Um, and I don't do that perfectly, but I think through that. And so, you know, it's one thing to sit here and kind of rib a little bit, but I have to acknowledge that, man, some of that ribbing is ribbing my, my story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I grew up yeah. in some of those camps. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a reason I, I mentioned like the survival guide for the soul book, and that's because well I had that, mm -hmm. and, and I can, you yeah. know, and my grandma had that. She gave that to me. Mm -hmm. I was fascinated by that as a junior higher and early in high school. It's like oh, in time you mentioned Gulf War. I remember sitting on my, on my uh, like I had this little knee wall in my bedroom. And I sat there with my tape deck and I recorded a drum. I did the same thing. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Is this like, yeah. I'm so scared? Like, and it was like, yeah. like pre podcast, you know? Yep. It yep. just happened on a cassette deck. You yeah, know? I was recording like yeah. newscasts on yeah. this cassette. So I'm like, this is history. I yeah. might need to, yeah. I yeah. Need, need to like, reference yeah. this. Yeah, what happens if the yeah. nuclear war happens? Yeah. This, yeah. this, this cassette's gonna be. Because there's no way anyone would come up with a way to search <laughs> history quickly and easily. So I'm gonna have these. Dozens of cassette tapes yep, of newscasts yeah, uh, be invaluable in the future. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah, but that's but but like so you can sit. I can sit here in this sense and go. Like I I, I think in many ways, there's a lot of damaging things that have come out of those mm -hmm. theological traditions. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that that it is my responsibility to attack people that hold it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is my responsibility to sit here and say, and it is, and I'll say it is my. It is my, my privilege and it is my care mm -hmm. to not necessarily just come at that with, with guns blazing, but to cut it open and to go, yeah, there's, there's something wrong inside of yeah. this. Yeah, because I think that when people hold a worldview, uh, and for our conversation specifically on end times things or sure eschatology uh when people hold a worldview there's what you talk about or what they push back against is kind of like the top of the ladder mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um but there are a lot of steps to get to that top yeah so when i engage with people who may disagree um with my take on something i don't i try not to push them off the ladder <laughs> yeah uh, because when you push them off the ladder that's damaging, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's painful. So I, I like to ask, you know, interesting, <laughs> how did you get to that point? Like, what were the steps that got you to the top of this ladder? And then if I can, um, if I believe that what they believe is damaging or hurtful or even mm -hmm. just not true, yeah. then I feel like it's at least part of my responsibility as a pastor to start asking them what step got you to that point? Mm -hmm. Let's examine that. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about that step. Yeah. And then maybe they may back down three steps and then you go, well, where in the scripture does it say that? Yeah. You know, where, how can you find that? Where from, from scripture yeah. do you see that step? Yeah. And if they go, I don't know, yeah. then that's an opportunity to say, well, here's, now yeah. let me show you how I got to the top of my ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Here are the steps that get yeah. there. So if we can gently walk people back down the ladder yeah. Yeah. to the floor and then kind of help them rebuild and understand yeah. the find truth. Find a new ladder. Yeah, yeah, because what you find is people, most people didn't start at the bottom of the ladder and climb to the top. Yeah. They had somebody pick them up as a child and put them mm. seven steps up yeah. and they made the last three themselves. Yeah. And so we're not trying to, that's, that's why I, we've said before, we're not speaking a message to just confront people necessarily yes. could, because yeah. you don't want to stand up here and push people off ladders. Yeah. Right. You, and in a, in a personal conversation, you don't want to push people off their ladders. You, you want to help them walk back down mm -hmm. and recognize that maybe step three, four, and five were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this isn't the way it's scriptures actually should have been taught. Maybe the foundation yeah. was a wrong foundation. 
And so we're very gentle. We have to be very gentle with people that we disagree yeah. with or who disagree with us. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think it's probably worth also acknowledging as you say that, that probably one of the, re although we, we give each other a hard time, um, that's our personality somewhat as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That there are, there are some who are very, like within the body of Christ, that are very intellectual, that mm -hmm. are very like logical and and in many ways, they don't take that approach. Yeah. And there are some who will respond to that. Mm -hmm. And I, I acknowledge that, but that's part of being, that's part of understanding who we are as individuals mm -hmm. and how God has wired us and finding a way to still help other people in alignment with that. Mm -hmm. And so there are times where maybe that confrontation is more direct, Yeah. Uh, but yet, there are others like but generally my home base is going to be more of what you described mm -hmm. i'll ask the question yeah i'll spend the time there because for me that's what i would have hoped somebody would have done with me yeah you know yeah. for me the, the like the, i'm shaped by that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i and that's how i pastor there are other times where like i've got three or four friends that i think of right now in pastoral ministry that is not the way that they handle things yeah right you know and and people respond to them mm -hmm. And so I'm just kind of like, okay, that's, that's great. You know, I mean, it's not how I would do it, yeah. but that's the way they're wired. And so, yep. you know, in a passage like this, they're going to take the, here's, and that's just, okay. And I, I think that there is a second part to your question that I think is important to address um, in that those who have a different view of this passage or this framework, uh, ask the question well what does it matter like it's better for me to have my fortress on the hill with the bunker underneath and lots of ammo um, that's just being prepared for the end times that's what it looks like mm -hmm. uh, what i would say what i think i would say to them and how i would approach that is jesus gave us in this passage what we're supposed to do and it's not hole up and hide out yeah um, because he spoke very clearly at the end, here is what the people who follow me did. Yeah. And, and then and I, he contrasts that with people who said, well, I thought I was following you. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't yeah. do this, and you didn't do this. Yeah. Right. So you weren't following me. Because yeah. if you were following me, you'd be doing the things that I did, yeah. and you didn't do that. Um, so I think it's really, I, I just, I feel like it's so important for us always to be able to go back and look at the life mm -hmm. of Christ and mm -hmm. look at the yep. words of Christ and look yep. at what he yep. said. What does it mean to be obedient to Jesus? Yeah. Um, he and gave I, us very, he was really yeah. clear on this. Yeah. This is why I don't know why it's so confusing. Yeah. But I think, <laughs> I think really in clear. many ways that what you just alluded to is why when I come back to the opening thing and thinking about this week's passage, yeah. like why would I address don't panic? Mm-hmm because fear gets in the way of doing what yeah. Jesus has called us to do as his people. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right? It gets in the way of, of us hearing, mm -hmm. I'm so glad you're here. You yeah. did what I asked you to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It gets in the yeah. way of that. And so how do we how do we explore that in a way that allows us to go, okay, well, yeah, I want people to understand some of the principles of how we arrive mm -hmm. to this spot mm -hmm. in light of the bigger picture. But yeah. if you don't have that, then it's just like, well, don't be afraid. Oh, great. That's throughout scripture. You don't need this passage yeah. to teach that. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Right. One of the things that I find fascinating is I think each one of us has a spot where it's easier or harder for, for us to either ignore or come down hard on a particular theological difference mm -hmm. of some kind. Yeah. And I think you raise a great point because I look at the two, the two main aspects of, I will call them misteachings that mm -hmm. I was involved with during, during my time. Um, both of them I didn't start, they weren't like ground level and then worked my way mm -hmm. up through them. Yeah. Um, one of, okay, so one of them, I was handed a book. What in the world is going on? 
For those of you yeah. that want the Reader's Digest version of that book, Tony Blair is the Antichrist. That's yeah. the moment where you can go ahead and snip that out and create a meme around just that. Tony, Tony Blair is the Antichrist. Antichrist. But, but it was... Some people are going, who's Tony Blair? Who's Tony Blair? Yeah. Oh. Oh. You just dated yourself. You did. Oh, just, it's yeah. not just us that yeah. date ourselves. Wait, that yeah. sounds weird. Yeah. All right, so yeah. yeah. Um, Age. Age. So <laughs> that... But, but that, was, that, was, that was preached mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. a pulpit yeah. by a pastor that many, many in the area would have, have nothing but great things to say about yeah. it. And so you ask the question, where did that come from? Yeah. Yeah. Rather than saying this guy who, who d d d yep. like, where, where does that mode of thinking come from? How do people, and, and you start to drill down into what leads somebody to yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other one was uh, me actually being a Christian now by this, uh, <laughs> by this point. Yeah. Um, not, not knowing a headlock from a wristwatch when, when it comes to anything theological and being told, oh, okay, so all of these things that you had before you were a Christian, before you got sick, all of that, you can have all of that. It's now just God flavored. Mm. Oh, okay, well, awesome. Like I didn't, but again, I didn't have the foundations to be able to, yeah, yeah. to understand anything wrong yeah. with with that. Yeah. So again, somebody grabbed me and stuck me halfway halfway up the ladder and yep. said, oh, "Okay, go ahead and climb." Climb the rest of the way. And yeah. and that's, I think, something important um, for for anybody. Because I, I can tell you, and and just we think we get so far down the uh, down the road, and then something happens, and we are reminded of how easy it is mm -hmm. for us to fall back into bad habits. Yeah. And just this past week, I was reminded of a bad habit of when it's there's a theological difference that I'm like, mm, man, I really disagree with this theological principle or this mode of doing things or whatever, how easy it is for you to lose sight of the Imago Dei in front of you, the mm. image bearer that's in front yeah, of you, the yeah. person that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And 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 in, in service of attacking something that is against scripture, there's, there's damage mm -hmm. that happens as, as a result mm -hmm. of that. And so I think you raise a really good point of understanding what brings somebody to this point of thinking. What mm -hmm. are the steps mm -hmm. that a person took yeah. to get to this point? Because then, then you can, with a clear mind, yeah. then step in front of a group of people yeah. and say, you know what? It's in scripture. Yeah. We can't avoid it. We can't ignore it. Yep. Because all of scripture <laughs> is good for study. Mm -hmm. yeah teaching the yep. whole nine that scripture yep. so cool here it is yeah. and how do we address this from a thoughtful way yeah so my question becomes when tackling something like this mm -hmm. what's the thesis <clears throat> statement what's what's the reader's digest this is the concept mm -hmm. that i'm looking to drill down on and present yeah uh, in in presenting this piece of scripture, sure. Uh, I think f for for how I like I, I've alluded to it already, but where I am leaning into as I come to this is 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 in in a sense the comfort of Christ to his disciples mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to not lose focus because things are scary, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they are they are as you already alluded to in this last message, they want to know when, when the temple's going to be torn down. Like, mm -hmm, geez, right. that's, that's, that's dramatic. Huge. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. When's that going to happen? If you're saying that, yeah. we want to know when. Mm -hmm. And so, so what is it that Jesus is really saying like, okay, mm -hmm. let's not, let's not lose mm -hmm. sight of yeah. this. Yeah. And so that's where, for me at least, the 
the care of Christ, the mm-hmm. love of Christ, to look at disciples that are going, that sounds scary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, don't panic. Yeah. It's going to get bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, Which is not, <clears throat> sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt no, I, your train I, of I thought. I pause for a breath and yeah. then <laughs> hoping somebody will speak because I'm tired. <laughs> well, I think that it's, it, it's not where um, people usually go. When you're trying to comfort somebody, you go, you tell them it's going to be okay. Yeah. And Jesus doesn't do that here. He goes, don't worry. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Like that's so incongruent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that doesn't feel comforting. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think that that's indicative of Christ when he's saying, don't follow false messiahs. Mm-hmm. He's implying continue to follow me yeah like that's yeah that's what it that's where it, he keeps coming back to don't worry it's going to get worse don't follow false messiahs keep following me so why don't you have to worry because you're following me yeah why 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 do you not have to like sure people he's telling them people you love are going to die yeah people who follow me are going to die they're going to be persecuted mm-hmm. people you know who follow me are going to turn mm-hmm. said so their love will grow cold and <laughs> yeah. they will they're going to rat you out and you're going to lose relationships mm-hmm. and this is going to be painful yeah um, keep following me yeah like so ultimately our comfort in all of this is supposed to still be in Christ yeah supposed to still be in following him yeah um, so it's not the don't worry everything's going to be okay yeah. it's don't worry you can still follow me yeah don't worry I'm still with you yeah. don't worry this is still going like I am coming back yeah mm-hmm. it just you don't know <laughs> when and you know later on he's like yeah. I don't know when but that is ultimately why don't you worry because I am coming back mm-hmm. right so one of the conversations that you guys can can look forward to um, that I, I want to go back and have is actually on 23 mm-hmm. when when you preached about that and and there was um, there were a lot of points of, of, of community conversation and and different things like that baked, baked into that that all was very thematic mm-hmm. for somebody like me and so, so more of what I'm about to touch on will come in that conversation. Sure. But I think that's part of, when, when you can pull out those principles, it illustrates the breadcrumb trail mm-hmm. from this is, this is, the, this is the, the, the truth of it. Now, how do you apply that truth in everyday situations? Yeah. And I am one of those people that I've, through, through patient brothers, through time and experience, through time with God, um, some of the things that I came to the table with that were super sarcastic at first and like hinging on just destructive, like I'm not, like it wasn't, it, it was satirical for the sake of, of tearing down, not, not anything mm. helpful. Yeah. Um, I still present, but but in hopes that it, it draws out some some authenticity mm-hmm. in in the situation. And one of the things that I am I, I, I tend to bring forward a lot is um, how you know know when when we are together as a group in a large setting. Um, in this context, it might be a, sun, a Sunday morning. For those of you guys watching that aren't here on the, here in in person. This could be a large gathering of your friends. It could be a large gathering of your family, whatever. It doesn't even need to be that big. My point is, is in groups, it's not always the time and the place to delve into every nook and cranny of everything that's going on in your life. But how do you still be authentic to the moment in your life without just, how are you doing? Oh, hey. Let me take up 25 minutes of your time and go ahead and break down everything that I've got going on, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And one of 
the things that in the last stretch of time that I have been walking with you guys that I have learned is when when you are when you are walking through the beats of life and part of caring for people is acknowledging dude that sucks mm-hmm. like yeah that really sucks that, that 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 is happening and i my words or my platitudes cannot take away the pain that you are feeling right now and existing in that context of the shared moment of man this sucks and yet we press on in god's name mm-hmm. does not mean that you ignore it <clears throat> quite the opposite yeah yeah and when and when those truths are drawn out that's that's beauty Mm -hmm. and and the moments like this in scripture are prime opportunity for Mm -hmm. being able to pull those out Yeah. yeah i think when you lean into the truth of what it's saying and that's where you're coming back with a big picture um it allows you to, you, you have to keep in mind that people that hold a different position, mm-hmm. they're, they're more than a label. They, and, and even theological position camps, whatever, when it comes to a position like this, a lot of people don't really, may not necessarily agree with all of those things if they actually sit down and think about it. Yeah. yeah. And so, so there's a, and this is partially where I think I alluded to earlier, our personalities is um, I'm much more drawn to asking questions and pulling people towards something uh, mm-hmm. or questioning where, the, where what, what steps got them to that point yeah. than, um, than the, the drive-by theological corrections. Yeah. And so there's, there's that, for me, there's a delicate balance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you can't, especially in a preaching context, mm-hmm. you've got to be able to present truth. Yeah. So when you, when you lay this out in the big picture, mm-hmm. then you can come back yeah. and you can gently come back to it and say, here's how this is effect. Here's how this affects your life today. Yeah. Yeah. Here's some other positions that people may have. Mm-hmm. Right. But if this is the big theme and if this is how it applies, does that logically check all the boxes, Mm -hmm. you know? And you may find yourself in a spot where you are here or you are there, but what does it look like for you to move your heart and your mind and your way of thinking into alignment with the bigger picture of what Jesus is doing, Mm -hmm. into alignment with the bigger picture of what Matthew has been laying out for us so that the way that we live our lives as followers of Jesus is not just making an effort to be logically consistent, but is making a logical and concerted effort to seek first the kingdom Mm -hmm. and his righteousness and letting that flow out. And then everything else, everything else gets added from that spot. Mm -hmm. It's it's there. And so that that's where as I, I'm thinking through this and this conversation has been really, you know, it's helpful for me. Uh, in the preparation piece Um, and I think in many ways it just clarifies it for where I feel like you know we need to go yeah Um, that I like I I think I feel I feel good about the the process I think you brought up in what you've said I think you brought up something really important for us uh, to keep coming back to in that we have to remember we're always talking to people yep so we're not talking to caricatures of yeah. people. We're not talking to worldviews. We're not talking to doctrinal positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're talking to people. Yep. And if this doesn't mean anything to a person, then it doesn't matter how theologically sound it is. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. how rational it is. Um, if you're just there knocking people down, yeah. um, or, or just trying to knock down doctrinal positions. Or gatekeeping. Or gatekeeping, yeah. Then it's it's useless. Yeah. Like, and that's, I go, I'm going to jump to Corinthians 13. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when Paul says, I could speak with the tongues of angels, but if I don't have love, yeah. it's a clanging gong and a crashing cymbal. Yeah. And that whole passage, that passage is not about you needing something to read at your wedding. The passage is about how you engage with people. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're not doing it out of love, mm -hmm. if, if love is not the motivation to speak truth mm -hmm. into a person's life, yeah. then it is no better than just yeah. um, clashing symbols. Mm -hmm. uh, so love has to be the motivation to correct a doctrinal uh, yeah. fallacy. Yeah. Love has to be the motivation to speak truth into that person's life. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it, 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 I think that applies just across the board. Yeah. If love is not the motivation, then you're not doing it in, you're not doing anything the way Christ right. did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it, love was his motivation for everything. Yeah. Love, I will say, love should motivate us to clarity in what we're communicating. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, and that is, uh, yeah. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're communicating to people. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, As we, as we bring this in for a landing, what are some of the principles that you can give to people that when we're presented with opportunity to think in terms of standards and practice, things like worldviews, things like um, denominational positions, theological positions, things mm -hmm. like that, that folks can remember that in the conversation, the other person is a person, mm -hmm. to hold on to that love. And, and ev even if that is, even if that conversation leads to a point of, like you were saying, coaxing them down a couple of rungs off the ladder mm -hmm. time and time and time. Mm -hmm. How, how does, what, what are some principles that somebody can start to put into place or spots where, where Jesus addresses this sure. and how to address folks? Well, I tune in Sunday to find out. <laughs> um, I think uh, as you were asking that, the, the, the one that just came to my mind a lot for like just the practitioner, mm -hmm. the, the, the normal follower is, uh, is not feeling like you have to defend yourself mm -hmm. at every moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is, uh, <laughs> I think it was Willard that, that said that he was practicing the spiritual discipline of not trying to have the last word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even if he could <clears throat> do it. Uh, for me, at least, uh, in vulnerability, uh, my defensiveness that often is, is given to me is to become cutting mm -hmm. and snarky. Mm -hmm. And um, at my worst, if I know someone's story, to be cutting mm. yeah. mm -hmm. and to dismiss their position by besmirching them as people. Yeah. Like, I mean, if, yeah. if I'm going to be like totally vulnerably honest, mm -hmm. that's where um, my mind might go. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll have the comment after the conversation's over in my head. Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of a thing or in the middle of it. But what I have really for the last several years been trying to make a concerted effort to do is to keep my mouth shut and just take it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because usually if you're in a disagreement with someone, they're not listening anyway. Yeah. yeah. They're in transmit mode, not receive mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so one of those practices that I would love to see the body of Christ develop more is the practice of keeping our mouths shut. <laughs> yep. Um, 
Yeah. So that when we do speak, we are speaking from a place of love and truth mm -hmm. and humility. Mm -hmm. um, Christ was very bold, but he was always humble in the process. Yeah. And I don't understand that. Because yeah. usually when I'm bold, it's because I feel like I've been threatened. Yep. I, I think that's, that's our normal human response. Mm -hmm. is you when you when someone disagrees with you it's it invalidates you as a person yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. and so our typical human response is i've been invalidated my opinion is invalid yeah um even if they don't mean to like yeah. they're not being harsh but you know hey i disagree with this i, I think you're wrong here well oh my goodness that yeah. That just makes me want to curl up yeah. and not want to talk to you. You know, that that's that's my issue. I don't get cutting so much as I just back away. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, well, yeah. I don't want to be friends with that person anymore. Yeah. They disagree with yeah. me. I will not talk to them again because I yeah. don't want to have that conversation. Yeah. I want to be validated. I don't want to, I don't want to be told that I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, and for me, that's the struggle is yeah is stepping into that relationship and saying yeah. i don't have to i don't need your validation to make me continue to love you yeah um and i don't want to invalidate who you are mm -hmm. either mm -hmm. by just going well i think you're wrong then and here's yeah. why and here's yeah. all the ways that you've screwed up yeah um so i w i want to engage with people in a way that continues to love them and show grace to them and uh, and here's what they have to say mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I, I think to your point Joe uh, that you're asking the question of how how do we engage with people that disagree with us in a way that still shows the love of Christ to them mm -hmm. um, and part of that does depend on the response of the other person as well. Yep. But as far as what we can do, um, as far as what I can do, is still be curious about. Well, how mm, did you? How did you get one. to that yeah. point? Like, yep. like you think I'm wrong. I'm okay with that. First yeah. of all, I have to be okay with them thinking I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and then I want to know. Well. Tell me the process yeah. that you went through to arrive to this conclusion. Yeah. Tell me the steps that you took to get up that ladder. Yeah. Uh, and maybe maybe there's, this isn't the context to start walking yeah. you back down the ladder. Maybe yeah. the context is, I'm just going to sit here and go, yeah. okay, I get that. Yeah. I yeah. get why you got to that I point. I need to hear your story for yeah. how you were. Like, and, right. when, and when you get to know people's story, exactly. often what you... Like they say, oh, we exegete a, a passage, but a lot of times people eisegete their story into the passage. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. And so it's like if you invalidate their story, their you're story, invalidating you're their yeah. whole story by yeah. saying, well, you're wrong. You're, yeah. You just, that's a great point. You've just yeah. invalidated the, the whole life process <laughs> yeah. to get there. Yeah. 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 You know, I think, I think for me, I can clearly chart the fact that before becoming a Christian, the same thing, you know, I, I've, I've always seen patterns. That's how my brain operates. Um, and, and that only became more true after my, my head injury. Mm. Um, and so I, 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 see, I see a pattern, and if that pattern is established, it becomes very easy for me when I start to see the beginning portions of the pattern for me to start off with this posture of, oh, okay, so you are on that ladder. Interesting. And for that to become, oh, you're on that ladder, which means this and this and this mm -hmm. and this and this. Yeah. And suddenly, You've, you've lost that person yeah. because that person has become, we've used the word straw man, but mm -hmm. an caricature. archetype, yeah. a caricature, mm -hmm. uh, you know, enter, enter different words here, yeah. but they have become something other than the person that's sitting in mm -hmm. front yep. of you. And yep. so 
now you're operating out of a sense of um, defense, but maybe not defense of yourself, feeling like you need to defend. Um, for me, sometimes I, I, I think I need, I feel the need to defend authenticity hmm. or, or, or to, fend, to defend authentic faith. Mm-hmm. Because I've seen so much of in th- in uh, in authenticity, I, I I've seen so much of how it it can become so easy for it all to become a show or a routine or something along those lines. That in my worst, when I smell that, I feel like I need to jump into defense mode and weed mm-hmm. that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And usually that hap- for me that happens internally. It's I mm-hmm. I like I'm, confrontation is not the thing that I love mm-hmm. in life. Yeah. I, I'm I'm puffer fish and uh, turtle <laughs> all at the same time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that awkward moment where you're the only fighter at the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I can take him on the chin. So <laughs> Uh, didn't say I didn't grow up and work around farms. It's just you know, <laughs> but it's the uh, it's that it's that sense of that's where the the battle of my mind and heart happens most. Yeah, like that's the forefront. Yeah, you know. Yep. Uh, that it's it's the internal, like oh, the mind of Christ is not my mind right now. Yep. The heart of Christ is not my heart right now. Yeah. And whether you want to flee and isolate or like just let loose the barrage of things that are running through your mind Mm -hmm. you have to be able to acknowledge people are not caricatures yeah people are not um people are not wholly lined up within specific camps and Mm -hmm. when you come to a passage like this if you only preach against a caricature then you miss the power of scripture. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would, and and I would, I would argue. I'm, you know, I know, I know. I made the joke about being the only fighter at the table, but I think that if we're being authentic, I think regardless of whether or not you let it out, or it all happens internally, mm-hmm. you still are in conflict with mm-hmm. the mind of Christ, sure. with your intention yeah. not being God's intention, yeah. and acting out of a way like you talked about last Sunday, you're either following Jesus mm. or you're following somebody else. Something, yeah. Yeah. something yeah. else. Yeah. It could be you, it could be something, yeah. it could be whatever. So that conflict, whether or not mm-hmm. you lash out or not, yeah. is still happening at oh, yeah. a spiritual level. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. still in the ring. Yeah. You just you're not gassing out throwing punches right away. Yeah. You're dodging yeah. and, and evading the whole time until mm-hmm. yeah. And then, and then you're like, oh, there's my opening, yeah. you know, yep. Yep. you know, those well-placed whatevers, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, that's why I think it's such a privilege and a responsibility to handle scripture. Yeah. Because yep. you can wield it in a way that allows the spirit to be the one that brings the conviction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah. begin to unravel people's realities or their perceptions of mm-hmm. truth. Mm-hmm. Or you can take that on yourself and mm. presume it's your responsibility to win all the arguments. And that's when people teach for like 45, 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thankfully, we don't yeah. do that. No, Mike doesn't. No. That's, that's me. There's a, there's a reason why not long after I started <laughs> attending here, I saw a meme there's a fine line between a sermon and a hostage situation. I immediately <laughs> sent it to Scott. <laughs> For some reason, this made me think of you. <laughs> Put your uh, tape back over your mouth, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get out of the zip ties? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> um... So before we wrap this thing up, any uh, any closing remarks? I uh, I think that as we just going back to this chapter twenty four, I think that um, one of the most important elements of this these passages to remember is that Christ does offer a lot of hope, mm-hmm. 
and and I, I do believe last week I said uh, I think I said I'll have to go back and listen I'm not sure if I did but I think I said something about I don't address the eschatological or the end times question because this isn't about end times yeah. um, and it can seem that way and I guess I could I, I should recant that a little bit because Christ is dealing with some end time thing yeah. here uh, but I still believe that this passage, both 24 and 25, is about how we are to mm -hmm. live. Yeah. So I, I don't look at it as end times yeah. um, because it's not telling us, here's what's coming, so, so do these things yeah. in preparation for the end. It's, here's, what's, here's what the end looks like. That's your hope, guys. Yeah. Here's how to live today, yeah. though. It is, it is both prophetic and practical yeah. yes. in yeah. the way it should be expressed. Mm -hmm. that's, and, and that's the, good. And the mm -hmm. church just often only focuses on it's one or the other. One or yeah. the other, yep. Yeah. And yeah. you've got to exist in the tension of the passage. Yeah. 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 Which stinks sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and if I may, even though I'm not going to be preaching any part of 20, uh, 24, if I could throw in just a couple of helpful, helpful words as somebody in a different context has walked through um, Matthew and, and this chapter and all, and all of that, if you are somebody that is listening or watching, that um, maybe some of the, the, the comments that we've had or some of the alternative modes of interpretation are ones that you know or, or may believe or something along those lines and maybe you're struggling with, with this. Um, one of the biggest things that I can say is when when we hit these points where these are these are scripture that more often than not you hear in an isolated context don't forget about the big picture that has been painted beat by beat verse by verse chapter by chapter throughout the entirety of the gospel account because like we've talked about each one of the four has a different emphasis point, but it's the same Jesus. Mm, that's good. And we get to see the heart of God on full display through the personhood of Jesus. Mm. So carry forward everything as you hit these tough verses. Just a quick reminder, um, you know, these, these verses and, and really any time that, um, that, that you hear preaching that is centered around books of the Bible, it can elicit questions. Um, don't, don't hesitate to engage with the Q&R time. At the end of the service, there will be a time for questions and engagement and all of that it's not to beat anybody up it's not a gotcha moment you know even even if it is something that is overtly in disagreement to a stance or a position or whatever if you if you read this and you only read end times into it or whatever um the the, the door is still open to, to ask questions and things like that. And if you're watching and you're not going to be here in person, um, we still value you as a member of the community, as a part of the Grove family. And so feel free to leave your question in the comment section on YouTube. And we will pay attention to that and make sure that your question is still answered. Um, an alternative way to ask a question and to engage in general is to find the Grove Church on Facebook, the, the, the page, and you can send a message to the page. Um, there will be somebody that responds uh, shortly after you send a message. So with that, I think that's Sounds a wrap. Good. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Yep.